Hey, Ian, another edition of the Incast. Good morning to you. Hey, morning. How's it going? Uh, I was uh, just looking at the views of the Incast. It's getting super popular on our channel, so I'm thinking people like what we're doing. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, we're, you know, to the point with everything, good information, I think, and, you know, in a different kind of way that a lot of people see things. For example, there's not still that, not that many bulls on Tesla. Um, crypto is getting more popular, but, you know, uh, overall, yeah, I'm glad the people are watching because I feel like this information doesn't get out enough. Well, I mean, for sure, without the Ian cast and us generally on this channel talking a lot about Tesla, a lot of our subscribers probably would thought, well, that's fine. It's just one of their stock breaks. But having made it a feature, I feel like, a lot of people, even if they were skeptical, even if they believed the mainstream media's view of Tesla and Elon Musk, uh, us just constantly talking about it, talking about so many different aspects of it, uh, at least many people would have at least bought a tiny little bit of Tesla. You know, when prices were <laughs> now, it seems so long ago, right? Ian, yeah. that it was like $350. I remember it was just literally four months ago, five months ago. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's been, you know, a basically a straight line up this year. So, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's interesting what you said, which is that it's still, even with the price rising, and it still does feel like a out of consensus stock. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, back when it was like two or 300 bucks, everybody was saying it's overvalued because they're going bankrupt. Now it's I just hit two thousand dollars yesterday, which is crazy. Um, a great a great kind of crazy. But um, now people are like, it's way overvalued. It's worth more than like all the car companies. So still a kind of wrong perspective. But I mean, yeah, it's still you know a lot of short interest. Tesla Q is still around. So yeah, I I, I believe that there's still. Um, the the mainstream media, uh, the folks on CNBC are still able to find uh, the any day that and you know it's impossible for Tesla stock. This is what makes this clear to go up every single day or to continue right. to go up in a straight line. Let's just make this clear for people that are completely obsessed with Tesla. I mean, and we are. I mean, you know, we, we you know we like the cars, we like the company, we like that it's leading the transition to electric vehicles. Uh, neural network, uh, vision-based, uh, you know, uh, cars, uh, you know, that drive themselves, the energy transition to batteries, solar power. We're, we're, we, we are definitely fans of all of it. Nonetheless, uh, there is also an element at some point in time, people who have made a lot of money will come and come to take profits. And the nature of markets is that some of them will have large blocks of stock that they want to sell. And there's no way that they're going to get the top tick price if you come with I don't know, several hundred million dollars worth of Tesla to sell, uh, you're going to have to take a haircut on price. And that's just a normal back and forth of the market. Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, $2,000, pretty, pretty amazing so far, considering like last May, June, it was, I think, under 200 for a brief period. Well, I mean, you know, just going back through, you know, I mean, personally, you know, so uh, full disclosure, Tesla is in our Profits Unlimited portfolio, has been in our portfolio, and was a bit of a saga because I put it in and then it went through, I believe it was the whole uh, 420 scandal uh, where oh, yeah. Elon uh, you know, tweeted that you know, he had uh, funding secured for a 420 bid. And then I believe it might have been, um, might have been the Model 3 scale up where uh, the shorts were able to really stimulate some amount of panic in the stock market. And uh, so we sold out. I believe I, I, I went in and sold out twice because for sure you feel a lot of pressure as a result of how much oh hate, hate uh, uh, Elon Musk uh, and, and Tesla seem to really draw from people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for a while during like the worst of that, like you said, it was during the Model 3 scale-up because they were like, it, I mean, they're going to go bankrupt if they don't sell enough cars. That's what, the, that's what the consensus view was. And it was like, well, they're selling enough cars, so their, their stock is going to go up. It's just a matter of when. And then it like happened all at once. <laughs> right. I mean, and, and that's the thing that I, th I feel like many uh, 
folks watching, uh, anybody talk about finances, that everyone has the expectation that when you buy a stock somehow from that moment on, it becomes something that is destined to only rise. And the truth is, is that uh, stocks can lead a more complicated life where yeah. they can rise, they can fall, and your conviction and your, your faith and your belief in the stock is going to be tested. And if you are simply a, a sort of a flipper that wants to be in and out, yeah, there's money to be made. However, you can see as, as our readers have experienced, which is that there is far more money to be made uh, by finding a company that is doing something that is uh, of, of significant value and where we believe that either between the short interest needing to cover, uh, buy side managers, either mutual funds, hedge funds, institutions, uh, coming in to build positions up, they can bid the stock up way more than whatever you can make by you know buying and selling day to day. I don't know what you might make three to five percent maximum. I suppose it's a completely different uh, kind of game. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, patience is like the key virtue in the stock market. I mean, if you if you know if there's a situation like Tesla where a business is clearly succeeding. Um, and you know, you're riding through like a rough period where the stock is flat or down over an extended period of time. I mean, holding on is really the only option if, if, unless something goes horribly wrong with the company, then you can sell. But I mean, it's, it's worked out with, you know, countless stocks over the years. Tesla is probably one of the biggest examples of that, how patients can just pay off. A hundred percent. This is a good moment to uh, tell folks that we at Bull Profits are going to be holding what we're calling the Super Bull Summit. And this is a uh, an event that I'm doing with uh, Karina, which is one of my colleagues. Um, and uh, this is about one of the hottest areas of the stock market uh, from many perspectives, Ian. Um, small cap stocks, innovation stocks, stocks that are definitively like, I mean, I suppose there are some small stocks there, America 1.0. However, the kinds of stocks we focus on, America 2.0 stocks, uh, many of them are still quite small, growing at rapid rates, still innovating. And if you want in on what we believe is going to be really the biggest bull market for these kinds of stocks, uh, well, uh, in um, the description below, underneath the YouTube channel, or else in the email in which this video is coming, just look for details on the Super Bowl Summit, sign up for it, so that you, you get to see it, and then there'll be a stock pick at the end of that. And um, so a, a huge event on sort of something that we're talking about, which is that for people that are looking to make big money, this is for sure one of the best markets, and Tesla is a great example of it. Right. Yeah. It, I, I agree 100 percent. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, in, uh, in in any number of our services, uh, we've seen people that, you know, were too impatient lose out. In other words, uh, it has been a volatile ride. No question about it. Nonetheless, um, across our services, we have multiple hundred percent winners in uh, in one of our service extreme fortunes. We're sort of counting down to when we're going to hit our first quadruple digit winner. I believe it's going to happen by the end of this year. Yeah. I mean, there have been, there's such a, like a huge difference between old and new stocks this year. Like it's really, it's a really defining moment for America 1.0 versus 2.0, because on one hand you've got like all the banks, oil companies, uh, airlines, things like that, that have, you know, barely recovered from uh, the, the crash in March. On the other hand, you've got a bunch of tech companies uh, that are up, you know, two, three hundred percent this year, and I mean, I've never seen a difference this big between two like sections of the stock market. Right, and and the average uh, investor that is paying very little attention has no awareness of uh, the fact that the S and P five hundred. Well, I, we did do this work uh, uh, last week in our investment team meeting, where we did see that the S and P five hundred equal weighted version is outperforming the cap weighted version. Right. Uh, and uh, however, regular folks are mostly invested in the cap weighted version, which effectively <laughs> uh, certainly, you know, is driven a lot by Apple. And uh, we continue to get a lot of grief on Apple. I have a troll on, 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 on Twitter that comes at me every day Apple is up. 
And I, you know, every week I say, hey, I got Apple wrong. I can just repeat that endlessly. I got the stock completely wrong. However, I still believe that what they are doing at that company is completely wrong. And that buying back 400 plus billion dollars worth of stock instead of focusing on innovation during, in certainly my lifetime, the greatest era in to make huge bets, to have it pay off, whether it be in blockchain, artificial intelligence, internet of things, gosh, electric vehicles, you know, neural networks, quantum internet, quantum, the, the number of opportunities and Apple is sitting there, the, so rich with cash, simply buying back stock every day, bidding its stock price up. Yeah, I know. It, yeah, it seems completely ridiculous to me. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, I've always had truthfully, I have to say that I, I've been in the past, probably not an Apple stock fanboy, but certainly I, I have a number of Apple devices uh, back there. Actually, there's even more. Um, I've got my computer and I've got uh, various iPods, iPhones that are bought through the time. However, I definitively feel that th this company uh, sooner rather than later, irrespective of the stock price, given what they're doing, uh, is going to run into trouble. Uh, given what they're doing. And one of the questions that we do get is that, Paul, is that going to cause markets to go down? Will And um, that's a, a reasonable question. However, I feel that given what we were seeing, which is that the equal weighted, weighted version of uh, the S&P 500 starting to out, outperform is telling you that there are a number of companies underneath that whose price rise, like Tesla, for example, uh, are starting to now offset the fact that even if Apple went down, it would now actually probably even start to lift the S&P 500 faster if more companies started to participate. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, if you look at like uh, the cloud sector and things like that, I mean, there, there are companies that have gone from like a billion in market cap to like 20 billion in market cap the past couple of years. Right. So there's like, it's a slow buildup um, that's going to become faster, obviously, because they're, it's it, a $1 billion company has much less weighting than a 20 billion in the weighted S&P. So as these companies get bigger, it's gonna have a bigger and bigger impact um, for when Apple uh, and the other bigger companies do start to steady off or shrink even. Yeah, and, and then you know Tesla in all likelihood will join the S&P 500. So that will reduce Apple's weight. Um, and then you know uh, there, there's other companies. Uh, Stuff is one of my you know uh, portfolios that I've given out to people. It's uh, Spotify, Tesla, Uber, Facebook, and um, uh, Tesla now. Okay, is now a multi-hundred billion dollar company. However, uh, the rest of that portfolio. I mean, and, and Facebook is also a multi-hundred billion, but Uber is still pretty small, and Spotify is pretty small, and they dominate their businesses. Right. And, yeah. Uh, and as those go up in value, uh, th that will also displace sort of the Amazon, Apple effect that's there on the S&P 500. So in time, I can see actually uh, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 slowly becoming more America 2.0. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would. I agree. So one thing that's heresy that I wonder if it could happen, Ian, and I was talking to our amazing colleague, Patrick Goodrich, about this. I wonder, like, let's say, you know, if we're just free thinking three years out, if Bitcoin could be part of the Dow or the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. I mean, you would need a whole change in governance of those organizations. But yeah, I mean, eventually I would I would assume that it it would have some weighting in there, um, seeing that, you know, there's already huge demand for it. I've saw recently that, you know, 95 percent of Bitcoin right now are being held at a higher value than they were bought, which means people are profiting, which means people are gonna buy more. Yeah, I mean, the Dow is is unrelated to any exchange. So that's the one that could put Bitcoin in. Yeah. Or that, that would definitely be an America 2.0 moment. Uh, and it's a good moment for us to transition from Tesla stock market um, uh, to, to crypto, which is the, these DeFi coins are, just on fire. I mean, they're crazy volatile. Like I get constant notifications from Coinbase telling me that one of my coins is up 10%, down 10%, seemingly sometimes within the same hour. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, they're like, you know, this one of the craziest things I've ever seen on like for something that's traded. But yeah, they're up, you know, some of them are up like thousands of percent 
uh, in the past month or two. Um, the whole the whole thing is kind of blowing up, and the amount of money that people are putting into these DeFi uh, kind of systems, which the main thing is borrowing and lending. So you can actually put in your Bitcoin or Ethereum into an account on one of these DeFi sites and earn um, like a rate, an interest rate on it because you're essentially lending it out. Um, people are using them for loans too. Um, it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing because otherwise, you know, to get a loan, you have to go through all this paperwork and all this hassle. Um, with DeFi, you can just you hit, put, put, your, um, put your money up as collateral and, and get basically money with, without doing paperwork um, without, you know, it's, it takes like five minutes. It's way easier. Right. And so just so everyone understands, and the way that we think about it, we think crypto stacks in three stacks. There's uh, the store of value crypto, which is Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, uh, Litecoin. Then there are these platform um, cryptos. Ethereum is at the very top of that stack. Then the next one <clears throat> that, at least in our judgment, is XRP, Lumens. Then there's like other ones that, you know, thus far have far fewer projects like Tron and others. And the Ethereum blockchain has now drawn a number of these tokens, coins uh, that are in, uh, it's called decentralized finance. In other words, essentially to simplify um, uh, many types of transactions today that would be very expensive, very complicated. And as a result of that, just never happen. And you just mentioned one, which is to borrow money against some asset that you might have. Um, it's it's almost impossible other than to go to a pawn shop or to informal lending where the lending rates would be usurious. I mean, it would be yeah. 100%, 140%. And I saw a note from Kathy Wood talking about the Cash App introducing something where they would be willing to give people $200. Um, and one of the things that's unknown is that many people, even in this country, I was shocked at the number, Ian. It's as much as 40% of this country is unbanked, the United States, which is, you know, really? Western yeah. developed, yeah, which is, was a shocking number to me. Um, and so the Cash App now, I think, has been downloaded by in excess of 40 million people. So that's, you know, that's just a lot of people in the United States. And a lot of them are in this unbanked category that often use uh, payday lending to get access to their paychecks. Uh, yeah, so yeah. If, you, if you lack a bank account, and what you do is you take your paycheck and then you go and take it to a payday lender that will often charge you for a short period of time as much rates as high. I could not believe this as high as 200 percent. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so anyone that can find a solution to this, it's obviously just it's just right in a right way in the sense that, you know, it's just for for people who make very little money to pay that kind of is just really, you know, I'm all for a solution that eliminates all of this. And something that's as easy as using your phone, I believe that's going to have a lot of take up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And you can use the Cash App and Venmo as bank accounts. Basically, you can get direct deposit now. So really, there's no reason to have a bank account. You can you can get a buy perfectly fine without one uh, at this point. And with DeFi, uh, I, I have a chart that I want to put up for the amount of money that is currently sitting in these platforms because it's I mean, it's a straight line up. It's that these are seeing rapid adoption because of their ease of use. And most people still don't know they exist. So when the public really starts to catch on that this is even a possibility, I mean, that's what these coins are starting to anticipate. And it's really only the beginning at this point. Um, uh, and many of these coins in our judgment are, are going to end up being things that facilitate the transition from our existing financial infrastructure which is very much driven by banks, insurance companies, uh, and other intermediaries that uh, charge very high fees, are very slow relative to what crypto uh, can, can deliver. And we believe that the world of uh, the old world of finance, which is banks, insurance companies, companies like that are ultimately going to go away. And a lot of their activity and economic value is going to transition into crypto. Uh, and uh, we believe that what is going now is quite real. It will be volatile. However, we do believe that because there is an actual reason for these coins to exist, which is quite different, Ian, than 2017, 
when right. it felt much more just a purely speculative sort of like, you know, it was just kind of promotion based sort of, you know, uh, movement of, of coins and people in some ways trying to, you know, just kind of extract money. Yeah, it was like back then it was like, it's like we can do this and it was marketing basically. And now this this time around, it's we are doing this and here's what it is and you can use it right now if you want to and see how much better it is. Right. And so we are, you know, we 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 are believers in Bit, Bitcoin and we have laid out a prediction that many people um, like to give us a some amount of stick for, which is Bitcoin at 50,000 this year, longer term, over 100,000. And I believe the next peak will be somewhere in the 200,000. I've said $250,000. I'd say that the out uh, line for that would be like, you know, uh, about 2023, 2024, maybe 2025. Uh, based on looking at the scarcity of Bitcoin, which is that it is a, it's a fixed quantity. There's 21 million Bitcoin that can be had, 18.3 million, 18.4 million, I believe, mined. Estimated, what, at least a few million lost forever, right? Right, yeah. A few million lost forever. Uh, and meanwhile, it is the first true global digital currency. You could argue that gold in a different time was a global currency. However, Bitcoin, given the, the, the fact that nearly everyone in every continent has a cell phone, and that is all you really need uh, to carry Bitcoin around, is more ubiquitous, more accessible than gold ever was or will be. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And it's, I mean, it, you can't really, you can't do anything with gold. You can't take it to a store and pay with it. I mean, with Bitcoin, you can not only pay for something with it, but you can easily, you know, transfer it to a different coin that you can use on some other network or that you can lend out or you can transfer it to basically uh, a stable coin, which is a coin that's pegged to a dollar. Um, so it's I mean, there's so many more uses for it than for for gold or silver or any of those. Yeah, and, and in what you're saying, as you listen to both of us talk, essentially, you can see an entire replacement uh, financial infrastructure being built that is very different. And the banks, insurance companies are largely uh, not really uninterested, <laughs> not yeah. participating, uh, and probably never will. Uh, uh, they will eventually be like retail, like the uh, internal combustion car makers, which is that it's very clear that those companies are all just going to fade and uh, end up in, in terminal decline. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's go to cannabis, uh, which is the, the third part of our roundup that we do on the Ian Castian. Um, I saw a pretty cool story that we'll put up uh, just for a second, which is that in Colorado, now you can get cannabis from a vending machine. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly never heard of that. So that's interesting. <laughs> right. I mean, so that's, that's pretty cool uh, that, that you can do it. For, from, from my perspective, it just also just goes to show you that Many people look at cannabis, and for sure, there was quite a bit of hype on it, you know, a couple of years ago. However, this is a real and fast-growing business that um, if some of the impediments were removed, for example, legalization around all 50 states, um, uh, access to banking, uh, you would see this have far more significant take-up very, very quickly. Right. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it is still doing really well, especially in the U.S. Um, you know, the the companies that are based here are doing are doing really well with, you know, growth, also um, expansion um, in the states where it is legal. So there is extreme high demand for it. And with the with the lockdowns and the quarantines and everything, they started delivering a lot more. They saw a lot of demand with that. Um, and as a result, uh, these these companies stocks are going crazy. and uh, recently, there have been a couple of true leave and grow generation that one of our Twitter followers asked, why are these like skyrocketing when so many other ones in MJ and ETFs like that are staying still? And really, it's a liquidity issue. Not a lot of people are aware of these ones um, like true leave and pure leaf and the, the other ones that are based here in the U.S. A lot of people hear pot stocks and they like, automatically think of canopy growth or something like that. That's where that's I mean, those are the ones where it's going to take a lot more money to push up when you have a more illiquid stock. If someone comes in with like five or ten million dollars and wants to buy, 
I mean, that's going to have a crazy effect on the stock because it's rare that it ever sees um, a, a buy with that much money at one time. Now, you've got a number of small ones in the $10 million portfolio service. I've got a number of small ones in the Extreme Fortune service. We have a big one in Profits Unlimited, which is my flagship service. Um, and the nature of bull markets is, in, is that generally it starts with uh, smaller ones, more liquid ones, getting bid up. And then there's a kind of transmission effect that goes to bigger stocks. It takes a lot more money, as you said, to bid up the canopy growth of the world. Uh, and nonetheless, um, we still believe that uh, people will come to bid cannabis stocks up, and I believe it will happen by the end of this year. And MJ and uh, uh, the the stocks that that we have across our services and others, uh, for you know for sure, uh, given that these companies have generally during this period of the dehyping of the stocks have done generally good things. Yeah, absolutely. They they've turned their businesses around. They were you know, trying to do too much in too little time. And, you know, they had to scale back, which they've done, uh, which they've announced for, you know, at least two quarters now. Um, so, yeah, it's only a matter of time before we see the demand start to come back into these companies as people get more confident that they can actually scale their production without having issues with, you know, uh, like uh, having enough money to operate, having the demand in the market. We know that those things are now a pretty much a certainty. So it's, yeah, it's only a matter of time. And I saw this other story as well, which is pretty cool, which is of a cannabis REIT in, uh, which has 80 million in, uh, in equity, another 40 million. Um, and it's to lend to various operators for facilities with respect to cannabis. And it's another indication of money that is, still pushing in. In other words, despite the performance of the stocks for the last couple of years, people, big money investors, because this is funded, according to this, uh, from 20 family offices. This is intended to be a $200 million investment vehicle. And so it just shows you that uh, money's coming into the sector, wanting to solve some of the problems that the sector is, which is that it's probably still a little bit hard to rent real estate. And so this REIT essentially is going to fund uh, a real estate investment trust that is going to encourage operators to actually allow uh, cannabis folks to come in and move in and allow them to operate their businesses. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a, probably a pretty good bet. I mean, I only know of one that's publicly traded. So, that's right. yeah. Uh, um, and then crypto is another answer in all likelihood to some of the financing um uh, issues that that many cannabis operators face. So, I mean, there might be some overlap really between our crypto and, and cannabis sort yeah. of ideas and, and coverage. Uh, anything else we should update the folks on? Uh, Tesla, the split is coming come the end of the year. Uh, and uh, I, I do want to, be in, to you know, I, I have seen this idea out there, which we want to make clear is untrue and false. Many people think that they are going to get extra shares and that oh. Tesla stock will be at 2000 after a split. And we want to say that that is categorically wrong. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, it doesn't really do anything to your account. I mean, if you have one share at 2000, you'll have five at 400 after the split. Right, so we just want to make it clear, there's no free lunch here. So after the split, what will happen is that the price of the shares will adjust for the split downward. That's why it went downward. And the number of shares will adjust for the split upward. In the end, when you multiply one by the other, the amount will still be the same. And to the extent that there are a lot of people out there thinking that there is a free lunch here and coming to bid Tesla up, in all likelihood, you know, some of those folks are going to be disappointed. And just like everyone thinks that, you know, there's going to be a huge surge in demand, generally speaking, our experience is that those surges in demand tend to anticipate these kinds of things. Yeah. So, I mean, when, when these things happen, the market does anticipate them. As we always say, the market's forward looking. So I would say that that is 100% true, that the market knows about this. A lot of people do. So yeah, it's, 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 I mean, there's really no value, I would say, to be captured from that. Right, yeah. So all right, Ian, we've done all of our usual things. You can go first, and I'm going to wave everyone goodbye second. All right, everybody. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for watching, and stay safe. All right, this is Paul saying bye. <laughs>